Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ray here. So today I wanted to talk about a very special hero, and that hero is Medivh. Medivh is in a weird place. He is classified as a specialist, but plays more like a support. He's probably the most utility-based support in the game, and he's classified as a support by most players. So he has a lot of unique effects to him. He has an ability that completely reduces all damage. He has a, a, a portal that he can place to teleport allies and himself. He can turn into a raven and fly over terrain and immune to all effects. And he has his only one damage-based ability, which is Arcane Rift. So he's going to play very different to whatever you're used to playing. And his skill cap is very high. So Alarak has a high skill cap, but he's mechanically difficult to play. Now, Medivh is obviously mechanically difficult to play as well, but Medivh is also more strategically complicated to play. and has a lot more depth and, compl and complexity. And this is mostly due to when you should be using Force of Will, placing the right portals, and where you should be going with Raven form. So what kind of comps is Medivh good in? Medivh is good in primarily against burst comps or pick comps. This is for two reasons. The main one is because Force of Will counters Burst, so it only shields for 1.5 seconds, but it prevents all damage that a hero will take. So this counters Burst comps like if a hero, if ETC, Tyrande, and KT are running around the map, ETC stuns, Tyrande stuns, KT stuns, they all throw their damage in. All that damage is going to hit within about 2 seconds, so most of the damage they throw is going to be negated, the vast majority of it. So he's very good against Burst comps. Um, any kind of burst hero, any kind of mage, Jaina, um, Li Ming, as well as like some heroes like Kerrigan, and maybe even Nova. But he's going to be weak against heroes that do sustain damage. So heroes like Nara and Gul'dan, he's weak to because the damage they do is consistent. So if you just per if you just ignore, you know, 1.5 seconds of their damage on a single target, that's not very impactful because they're going to be doing a ton of damage to multiple people. So let's go over his abilities quickly. Arcane Rift is a straight line nuke that just does damage, and if you hit an enemy hero, it completely refunds the mana cost and the cooldown is reduced to 2 seconds. So 2 second ability, two second cooldown ability that costs 0 mana and does damage to all enemies hit, as long as you hit a hero, is pretty damn strong. However, it's his only damage ability. Um, you can get talents to, do, to make your other abilities do damage, but for the most part, most of your damage comes from Arcane Rift and just your basic attacks. The second ability you have is Force of Will. And Force of Will, you can target on any allied hero. The range is very large, and it prevents them from taking all damage for 1.5 seconds. Now, this is only preventing damage. It's not the same as at all to Divine Shield, which makes you immune to effects. So... With Divine Shield from Uther, of course, you're immune to any kind of crowd control um, and any kind of movement impairment effects whatsoever. That means you can walk through Zarya's Expulsion Zone, for example, with Divine Shield, but you cannot, you're still, you still can get silenced, you can get rooted, you can get polymorphed with Force of Will. You just don't take damage. So this ability is very good against Burst, obviously. Then you have Portal. Portal is. Portal is complex to say the least. It, you can do a lot with it and you can make a lot of stuff happen and it's basically pretty much the reason you take Medivh most of the time. Force of Will is very good but key portal placements is what makes a good Medivh player and when you should be using the portal placements. So if you place a portal it lasts for six seconds and any ally on your team can take it. So the portal spawns from you and you can place it anywhere in between these two circles. If I place it here, portal will spawn and you can take it as many times as you want uh, until it disappears. It also grants vision in the area, so you can also just use it as a ward or to scare enemy heroes off. So if you're contesting an enemy or a point on Towers of Doom, for example, you can just put it in a bush and they might be too afraid to contest the point because your whole team can come through. Even if you're alone, if they don't see the enemy heroes, if they don't see the heroes on your team, then they're going to play much more safely around it. Now, even Medivh's mount is different than other heroes. So it takes a little bit longer to cast it, and there's a little bit of a channel time that once it is casted where you can't move, but it makes him immune to all damage, all effects. This is basically like having Divine Shield, and except that you can't capture any kind of points, obviously, and your, your vision is reduced, your movement speed is reduced, but you can go over walls, you can go over terrain, you can go anywhere you want on the map, and 
the enemy team can't do anything about it. There's no counter to this. Um, the only the only thing that um, Mediv... I mean, Mediv can't really cast abilities from this either. If you do cast abilities, it's automatically dismounted. So Mediv can be very difficult to kill, um, as you can imagine, with all these abilities together. So if he's being chased by an enemy, he can shield himself multiple times in a fight, and he can portal out and instantly get to Raven form, and now you can't kill him. So now that we know a bit more of what his abilities do, let's talk about some heroes that he's good with. Um, so as I said, he's good against heroes like that do burst damage, but he's also good with heroes that maybe lack mobility on their own, or are going to be in the midst of things in team fights. So, for like for example, he can be good with butcher. Now I don't I don't think butcher is particularly viable, but Medivh is pretty good with butcher because butcher is really good at engaging, but he has a hard time getting out of fights, and the Medivh shield helps keep him alive. Another example is uh, medic. Medic Medivh is really good, as long as you have a lot of damage on your team to make up for the fact that you have basically two support heroes for the most part. That's not to say that Medivh doesn't do any damage. Medivh actually can do a lot of damage, especially uh, if people just keep stacking up for Arcane Rift. But for the most part, he doesn't do as much damage as, say, Vala. And it's definitely not as reliable. So the, the reason um, he can be good with Medic is because you can portal Medic in and out of fights, especially if the enemy team is diving the backline. So imagine when ETC is stage diving under Medic, you place a portal and Medic can just portal out. You can also shield Medic and you have <clears throat> both your Heroics, Leyline, and Polymorph to keep Medic alive as well. Um, another really, really strong combo is Stitches Medivh. And obviously Stitches is good with that because you can gorge an enemy hero and then take the portal and remove a hero from the fight. So what will happen pretty often is Stitches will gorge, then you'll place a portal down, and then Stitches can just take the target behind a fort. And that is really powerful and pretty much uncounterable for the most part. It's very obnoxious. All right, let's go over Medivh's talents. So Medivh has a fairly standard talent build. Um, this is pretty much never deviated from. The only options or the differences are mostly at level 10. So level one, you have Stable Portal, Portal Mastery, and Raven's Intellect. So the vast majority of the time, you're going to go to Stable Portal. And Stable Portal increases the duration of Portal by 50%, which is a lot. So it goes from 6 seconds to 9 seconds, and you can do a lot with that. Uh, so the increased Portal duration, 50% is a pretty big increase. So it's very significant in fights. Uh, Raven's Intellect, you never run out of mana. Mediv has no mana problems for the most part, so this shouldn't be an issue, especially if, as long as you're hitting your Arcane Rifts. Portal Mastery is interesting, and if you're really good with Mediv, and your team is really good with Mediv, Portal Mastery definitely has a spot, but the vast, the vast majority of the time, you're just not going to be able to use it effectively, and for the average player, Stable Portal is going to be much better. So what Stable Portal does is it lets you place the location of both portals. So if I just play this portal normally without the talent, I can only place one portal in between these two zones, circle around me. Let's say I place it here, and that's where the portal is going to spawn. Let's go with Portal Mastery. Now you can manually place both portal locations. So this means, yes, I can place one directly on top of me as I would normally, but I can also place one, let's say over here, and then I can place another portal down here. So if there's an ally up here, I can portal an ally down. So I can basically target where my team needs the portal instead of the portal always going back to Mediv. Now you can also, if you cast this portal at the max range, it, you can then pass can connect the other portal at max range. So in this way, you can cast the portal much further than you normally would. It's actually twice the distance. Um, so this is very useful on some maps and some situations, or if you're really good at Mediv. But as I said, it's not easy to pull off, and it takes a lot of experience. So most of the time, the you're just going to be better to stable portal. So level 4, you're going to get bird's eye view, and this increases the vision uh, while you're in Raven form by 25%, but more importantly, it gives you basically a uh, reveal for um, 5 seconds around you. So if I take this talent, you see that Medivh's vision is, is significantly reduced in Raven form. So when I take the talent, it increases, and that's a pretty substantial amount. Um, it lets you see a lot more around the map, and when you activate the vision, it gives a massive area of vision. 
Now, this doesn't reveal, this isn't like Clairvoyance, where it actually reveals stealth heroes. It just provides vision in the area. So the other options you have are Dust of Appearance, which basically does the same thing, um, except that you don't have to be in the location. But this is, Bird's Eye View is basically a better version for the most part. It's a lower cooldown, and the and you also get the bonus of having more vision range uh, by 25%. The other option you have is Mage Armor, and I actually think this is pretty underrated, and I'm surprised this is never taken. But obviously the vision from Bird's Eye View is quite good. So Mage Armor gives your whole team, if they take the portal, um, three charges of block, or 50% block, and that's quite a lot. It's 1.5 autos for each hero that enters it, so if your whole team enters it, you're going to be reducing quite a bit of damage. But most of the time, um, Bird's Eye View is going to be the better option here. So level 7, you should always be taking the Master's Touch. So you have other options, but they're just not going to be as good. So all three, all all four options here increase the damage, increase Medivh's damage, but the Master's Touch actually kind of changes how Medivh is played. So once this is stacked up, and it's somewhat difficult to stack up, but not incredibly difficult. Um, the thing is that it's a level seven quest talent, so those take a little bit longer to do. But once it's stacked up, this significantly increases Medivh's damage output. It doubles his damage. Um, so the other options here, you have Arcane Charge, which just increases uh, the damage of Arcane Rift by 30%, and you have Arcane Explosion, which is pretty good. Uh, it's going to do quite a bit of AoE damage, and you have Raven Familiar, which increases the damage um, when your ally enters the portal. So Raven Familiar is unreliable, and Ra Arcane Explosion just does more damage in general. But then you compare, compare Arcane Explosion to the Master's Touch. So I'm not going to stack it because it takes 30 stacks, and it's going to take too long for the video. But try Golden Tribe Mode if you haven't tried it already. And what it does here, it says... It reduces the cooldown for hand and hero by one second. So obviously the cooldown of Arcane Rift is seven seconds, but it already reduces the cooldown by five seconds. So the cooldown is two seconds, and you're reducing the cooldown of Arcane Rift effectively from two seconds to one second, and you're increasing the damage. So that is a massive boost in damage, and you basically act like a machine gun uh, with Medivh if you're hitting Arcane Rift. Now, as I said, Medivh has a high skill cap, so finishing this quest without dying, and always hitting your Arcane Rifts really plays into how much effectiveness you're going to be getting out of the Master's Touch. So if you're a player that's new to Medivh, I wouldn't, I, I, that's the only reason I wouldn't recommend this. But if you're going to consider playing Medivh for any length of time, you should be getting the Master's Touch, and you should be focusing on being able to stack it quickly and effectively and not dying. If you die with this, if you die one time, say you get like 25 stacks and you die, you're not going to stack that for quite a while, and it's going to impact you um, in the game. So being able to stack this without diving, dying even once is very, very important, and it's a skill that you have to learn. However, it is relatively easy to stack it once you've learned to play Medivh. Why? Well, Medivh can play very aggressively because he can take portals. He can push portal out, he can shield himself. He has Raven form. He has a lot of ways that make him very slippery and allow him to play very aggressively and get stacks very easily. Remember that it's 30 heroes hit, so you can hit, you know, five up to five heroes with with each Q, assuming that, you know, you can hit them all. Uh, if they have Vikings, for example, you can hit even more potentially. So you can stack this fairly quickly. It's only a two second cooldown, and you can hit more than one enemy hero. So it shouldn't take that long to stack. Generally, you wanna you, you'll get it stacked by maybe. 10, level 10 to level 12, if you haven't died. So as I said, Polybomb and Leyline Seal are options you have at level 10. So by and large, the standard is Polybomb. And Polybomb is good for a variety of reasons. Um, the biggest thing is that the cooldown is only 40 seconds. That's really low, and it's half that of Leyline Seal. And in the vast, vast majority of games, you want to go Polybomb. Because Polybomb is easy to use, and it's effective. And has a low cooldown, so if you mess up, it's only 40 seconds. Leyline Seal is a little bit more complicated, and it requires more commitment from your team. So Polybomb is going to silence. It's basically polymorphs, so they, they basically are silenced for two seconds, and they can't attack. And this spreads to enemy heroes, so this is also a hard counter to some abilities. So we talked about Chen before and how strong he was, and how strong a Storm Earth Fire is, and the one of the best counters to Storm Earth Fire is, is Polybomb. So when he Storm Earth's Fire, 
Note the cooldown is also significantly longer on Storm Earth Fire than Polybomb, um, so it's totally worth trading out these abilities. Since Chen can't micro individual heroes apart, the same way that the Lost Vikings can, for example, Chen's going to be stuck together with all three of his uh, clones, and he's going to be unable to cast any abilities for the full duration of Storm with Fire until it ends and he goes back to normal form. So this hard counters Storm with Fire as it does some other abilities. It's also just a two second polymorph. Um, you don't even have to spread it to nearby heroes for it to be effective. Say that, um, for example, your ETC lands a Stormbolt. You can just polybomb and then you have a total of 3.25 seconds of CC. That's quite a long time. And the range is actually uh, quite good. Um, it's, it's fairly it's, it's fairly a good, a good range for... It's not, it's not too short. It's definitely an ability that you don't have to be right in the midst of things to cast. So Leyline Seal is also an option. And the way that you want to look at it is... The important part that you might be missing when you think of it is... Because it travels in a line... I'll just reset talents talent. here. Yes. Because it travels in a line... It's going to hit um, some heroes before others. So you can see that it doesn't travel instantly. It takes time for it to, for it to get somewhere. So if you hit a hero at the beginning, they're going to exit the ley line before the heroes at the end. Okay, so imagine there is a hero right in front of me, and the rest of their team is, is behind them. Okay, so if I hit them, and I hit the rest of their team, they're going to come out about one second earlier than the rest of their team. So that gives you time to blow the hero up when they immediately come out of ley line before their team is able to follow up. Um, of course, you don't have to hit the hero in the original ley line. You can just ley line away their team. Uh, you can also, you, so ley line has a bunch of uses. Um, you can ley line their, the rest of their team away while your team escapes, or you can ley line to zone their team while you focus a hero. You can use it to catch enemy heroes that are trying to run away. You can win it just in the middle of a fight to kind of reset your team. And it works it works similarly to VP if you just hit their whole team, whereas it gives your team time to set up. Maybe Malfurion will walk up, root the targets, and then silence. But it also can do something that you might not have thought of. It can actually steal bosses. It can steal capture points. So if you land this on an enemy hero, because it doesn't work the same way that Void Prison does, where if you Void Prison a capture point on boss, for example, then it freezes the capture point. This does not freeze the capture point. So you can actually cast it on any hero standing on the point, and then you can just stand on the point and cap it while they're being zoned in stasis. So the reason I say that Leyline is more niche, I guess, than Polybomb is because one, it takes a lot of skill to use, and two, it requires your team to follow up. And it requires a lot of synergy from your team that you might not expect in quick match or your league. So level 13, we have some more options here. We have Quickening, Astral Projection, and Winds of Celerity. Winds of Celerity increases the movement speed of your Braven form, so from 20% to 30%. This makes it in line with the rest of the mounts in the game. You have Astral Projection, which increases the range of Portal by 50%. And you have Quickening, which reduces the cooldown of Portal by 50%. So by and large, Quickening is the best talent here. 50% cooldown reduction is a huge amount, and it basically gives you 100% uptime on Portal. So with Stable Portal, it's increased from 6 seconds to 9 seconds, and the Portal cooldown is 20 seconds. So if you have a 50% reduction in cooldown, it lasts for 9 seconds, and it has a 10 second cooldown. Which basically means you have it up whenever you need it, and it's always going to be available to your team. So it's, you can almost use it as a permanent ward as well, if you just want to keep it in a bush. So the reason this is better than increased range is because you usually just don't need the range. If you think of a team fight, the fights aren't so big that you need somewhere else to portal on the map. Where generally, like, this is the normal range of portal, and team fights are generally not further than this, than the furthest point I can cast the portal. Generally, they're within this range. So the only reason that you get the astral projection and increased portal range is if you're doing a fight that is. You know, somewhere else in the map, or you're trying to catch an enemy team, or you're trying to get away, or this is more for utility in, in terms of objectives. Um, quickening is better for just straight up team fights, and it's still obviously good overall. So I just want I want to show you though how big the cast range is. So this is the normal cast range, 
And if you have astral projection, it's way over here. So this is very, very far. And if we go to reset talents here, and I go to portal mastery instead of stable portal level one, and then we get the portal range. So you can see that once I have the portal range, I can cast the portal all the way over here, and then I can cast it again way further over here. So you can cast it basically across the map. So if you just think of a map like Dragonshire, you can basically portal from bot lane and portal someone all the way from mid to top lane, um, or a fair portion anyway. So you can move vast distances across the map. And, but this, again, is pretty niche and uh, requires a lot of synergy from your team. So the other options at 16, um, well, you don't really have that many options, to be honest. You have circle protection, which is somewhat decent, but not really. You have reabsorption. Enduring will isn't good. It increases the duration from 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds. And circle protection shields all allies near the target. The problem with circle protection is that it's such a short radius that you're not going to be getting much use of it. Reabsorption is going to heal significant amounts to your allies, especially if you're playing at lower levels of play, um, or even just in Hero League. I mean, even in, even in competitive, um, people keep attacking the shield anyway with Force of Will, so the target gets healed. Um, but especially at lower level of play, people are going to basically ignore the shield and keep trying to damage through it anyway, which will just heal the target a substantial amount. This is If, if you're against a, a team with Burst, you're going to get a lot of feeling out of this. Level 20 is a little bit awkward. Um, there aren't, there's a lot of choices here, but they're not really that good. So Medivh Cheats is bad. Uh, it's going to increase the duration of the, of the stasis effect, which isn't very useful at all. So from 3 to 4 seconds, and then you can redirect the wave, which again, you don't need to re redirect the wave. Uh, Arcane Brilliance, because they can't get hit more than once. If they could get hit more than once, it'd be different, but you're basically just trying to hit if you haven't hit heroes in the first wave, then it's probably not going to be effective on the second wave when you redirect it. Guardians is... I mean, it just lets you instantly wave clear on, with your Q, and that's not too effective. I mean, you can pretty much clear them out pretty quickly anyway. I mean, a level 20 wave clear talent isn't that strong. All right, so you have Arcane Brilliance and Invisibility, and you have Glyph of Polybomb. Glyph of Polybomb is, of course, if you take Polybomb, and it's a very unique talent. So it actually reduces the duration of Polymorph. And somehow, Blizzard wants us to think that that's a buff. And indeed, it is in some situations. So if you're just trying to burst the target and you're just using Polybomb as a CC, this is not going to be a better upgrade for you. The benefit of, of Glyph of Polybomb is that because it explodes one second sooner, it's going to be a lot harder for the enemy team to get out of. And indeed, the, the spread radius is increased. So this is basically saying, uh, we're gonna, it's going to polymorph their whole team a lot more effectively, but they're going to be polymorph for a shorter duration um, as long as they're not stacking for it. So this can be an option if the enemy team seems to be stacking a lot. Arcane Brilliance is generally what you're going to be taking, and that's just because it's really easy to use and it's still very effective. So it, you restore 200 mana, and that's quite a lot of mana. Um, that's for the most part almost like 25-30% of, of mana to their team to your team and especially if you're trying to do like a death push or you're trying to do a sustained fight the mana granting mana is, is very very good and very few heroes in the game actually grant mana i can only really think of malfurion's uh innervate and you also grant 10 percent ability power so your team does 10 percent more damage from abilities which is for the most part just 10 percent increased damage which is also really good the cooldown is also relatively low at 60 seconds the other option you have is invisibility and invisibility could be really good, but it's also really hard to use. So in the future, when you're when you're thinking about what what talent to take here, uh, it really depends on what you're comfortable on. Um, but don't take Medivh cheats, don't take Guardian, and if you're gonna take Invisibility, you're probably gonna want to be in columns with your team. Otherwise, it's not gonna see much effectiveness. All right, guys, that pretty much covers Medivh. I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, I will talk to you then.